how would you all respond if I were to ask the question, where does lightning never strike twice? Well, obviously, your answer would be the same place, right? And similarly, what were we always taught was the time of night that it was most dark? That would be just before dawn, correct? So if I were to ask you what you would do if life were to give you lemons, you all would say, make lemonade. Make lemonade. So allow me to clarify what lemons and uh, space have to do with TEDx Virginia Tech. Obviously, when life gives us lemons, we are told to make lemonade. But would you make lemonade? And more importantly, why would you make lemonade? Is there anything else we could do? Well, I'm not interested in lemonade. If I were given a bag of lemons, I would come up with some crazy idea to launch the lemons into space. <laughs> now, which sounds more exciting, a cold glass of lemonade or lemons flying through space at over 17,000 miles per hour? But how do we know what we want to do with our lemons? Where do we begin? The answer is simple enough. Our passion. We get excited whenever we can connect any opportunity back to our passion. What I mean by this is um, our, our, we get excited when we can connect any opportunity back to our passions, passions that are working towards some end result or final goal. What I mean by this is how um, is when you've been working tirelessly day in and day out, hour after hour, but after all this invested time, you eventually lean back in your chair, and you're done. That's what I'm talking about. When you know, without a doubt, that you have completed your job and have done it perfectly, that's what makes it all worthwhile. The next step is making sure that once you reach this point, you are doing what you love and loving what you do. It's a simple statement, isn't it? The difficulty, though, arises when asking the question of how one will get to this point. The fact of the matter is, there aren't any definite answers, but there are directions. Take, for example, how in 1804, Lewis and Clark were thrown out into the wild with only two objectives, follow water and head west. They had minimal information about what, about what lie ahead of them, but they knew what they wanted to accomplish. I believe we're all on a similar journey, a leap of faith with that final destination of success. It is a journey to discover how we can apply our skills to change the world. It is a journey to push the limits and redefine our own potential for innovation. It is a journey to decide what we're going to do with this abundance of lemons. <laughs> abundance of lemons. That phrase may not only be in reference to a cheap car lot, but I believe it could be a category for some of the 21st century's biggest problems. What I mean by this is how we define a lemon as unsatisfactory or imperfect. To me, my lemon is the current state of the modern rocket. Sure, it can take us to space, but we've been doing that for the past 50 years. So I ask, what's next? What's new? I share a vision with today's space companies, specifically SpaceX, where instead of jettison rocket engines or stages burning up in the atmosphere, we program them to navigate back to the launch pad for a soft vertical landing. That's my passion. That's what I see myself working on in the next 10 years. That's my lemon to fix. So I ask you, what's your lemon? For this, for this example, as well as whatever your lemon may be, the first step to executing on this dream is not only the hardest to accomplish, but also the most difficult to conceptually grasp. In order to fix the lemons of today, we need to find a way to make the impossible a reality. Now, I know what you're thinking. Josh, the impossible is called the impossible for a reason. It simply cannot be done. Well, to that I say we look back in time. 
Sir John Erickson, British surgeon extraordinaire to Queen Victoria, was once recorded in 1872 saying, the abdomen, chest, and brain will forever be shut from the intrusion of the wise and humane surgeon. The first modern brain surgery was successfully conducted 11 years later in 1882. Lord Kelvin, a British physicist, was once recorded in 1899 saying, radio has no future. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible, and x rays will prove to be a hoax. Only four years later, in 1903, man took flight, saw the invention of some of the earliest x ray medical devices, and the US Navy was already implementing radio communication systems into all ships. Albert Einstein, in 1932, 32 once criticized efforts of nuclear energy, saying that there is not the slightest indication that it will ever be obtainable. 13 years later, in 1945, the Manhattan Project atomic bomb was successfully tested in New Mexico. I give these examples to not only show that the term impossible has been used throughout all time, but to also show that even the brightest minds in their respective fields slap the impossible label on technology that would readily become available in less than a decade on average. Only 10 years from impossible to reality. Applying these observations to today, I think it's safe to say that the impossible is not a set limit, but a boundary to be broken. The impossibilities of today are just the realities of tomorrow. To demonstrate this, I want to introduce you all to a simple interactive experiment. Shown here are nine dots arranged in a three by three matrix. Your task is to connect all nine dots with only four straight connected lines. Sounds easy enough. But as we explore possible solutions, we find that the answer may be more difficult than originally thought. From here, I prompt you to think outside the box, but take it in a more literal meaning, and you'll find that the dots themselves are enclosed in an imaginary box. Once you do this and think outside the box, you will eventually come to this solution. You have just accomplished the impossible. Four lines was pretty difficult, but could we connect all nine dots with only three straight connected lines. Now, this must be impossible. We can take one look and instantaneously see that it cannot be done. Or can it? Instead of redefining the box, we redefine the dot and take advantage of its thickness. Once again, you have just accomplished the impossible. Dare I say, can we connect all nine dots with one straight line. Well, maybe this is impossible. <laughs> but remember, the impossibilities of today are just the realities of tomorrow. There's a famous quote by Apple saying, the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. Take a second to let that sink in. The people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. Reject the adequate and always possible. Throughout all you do, never submit to the conventional way of thinking because anything that has ever been worth accomplishing would have already been done so through this. Eventually you'll find that you've redefined the potential for innovation. And once again, you will have accomplished the impossible. Today, it's by connecting nine dots with one straight line. Tomorrow, it will be by coming up with some of the most innovative solutions to some of the world's biggest problems. So today, I ask you, what will you reject? What is your lemon to fix? What boundary will you break? And when life gives you lemons, how will they allow you to do that? Thank you.